Now this is a second way, <clears throat> excuse me, to sew a loop on a collar. Um, what I have done is sew one end of the leather strip, the same leather strip I used in another video a second ago, to the collar itself, one ended. Then the easiest way to do this, I need the loop to go around like that. And so if I have the collar upside down like this, I will again have to pull the loop out of the way and that's what makes it go crooked. So at this point, I place it where I want it. I could put a pin down through the bottom probably, but I'm going to try and hold it. And I'm going to put this under the presser foot so that the foot goes right through the loop. And so when you're doing it this way, it's important that you are able to hold the leather that you're sewing in place until you get that first stitch in. And it's still going to be difficult. Make sure I have it on forward. As you can see, um, so I maybe have one stitch in there, and I have to pull this out of the way and sew it at the same time. Now, um, the machine just came unthreaded, so right now that's sitting there not really being held by anything but the pressure of the presser foot. Um, a free arm machine wouldn't necessarily make this any easier. And I don't want to back it off of there because I'll have to reposition it. Now, one of the applications you might be using <clears throat> a skill like this, other than a dog collar, would be if you're making your own tote bags or handbags or um, anything, a belt, anything with a buckle or that you want um, a loop. I don't know what they would actually call these, like a... Um, a securing loop. This just doesn't want to cooperate right now. It's being threaded. This is when it gets annoying. It goes right next to it and not in it. So this is what I meant by don't be afraid to try these things. Um, because each skill that you add to sewing is one that you're going to remember. So I have several vintage leather handbags. If I need to repair one, because you can't buy things like that anymore, um, I might need to know this. Now, so potentially it can go over the foot and the foot is in there. But three or four stitches is not really going to be enough to hold it. So I can hit reverse. Make sure that the leather piece is held there, which I think it is. Pull it out and do the same thing from the other side. And as you can see, it's halfway attached. 
So now I do the same thing from the other side. And so this is like a day like that where everything falls over. But this is um, part of sewing is figuring out how to accomplish something that may or may not be in a pattern. So this is the side I want to secure. And normally you wouldn't think, well, I have to come at it from one side and then the other. But by doing it this way and being a little bit unconventional, you still get the leather attached to the collar. You get a straight loop that's not crooked. And you've gotten um, a new way of thinking about sewing that when you come to the next project, I'm going to leave this video like this and look for another camera stand at some point other than a Kong toy. Um, but this is a lot of times the type of sewing people do, and that's why I'm leaving it like that. I need this to be um, secured and fixed, and I don't want to make a big, huge project out of it. So you can see um, that it didn't line up perfectly, but it is secured, and now I can go back from the other side, do some more from this side, and get it on there again. And the end result, you know, so the whole video, the whole little task here has not been the neatest um, as far as... Um, completing it, except I get a better loop on the collar. I did have the collar as a circle loop. Um, I did have the little loop on the collar as a circle a few minutes ago and decided I did want to change it. And so now this is how it will sit on the collar. So it's a little bit tighter, a little bit straighter. And I'll reinforce that again on the back. And it's another thing that, um, you know, when, when you run into, I had all the equipment I ever needed for a dog, a cocoa bean, and uh, the dog I have now, a scout, is bigger. And, you know, it's typical of life. Life is an adjustment. And so now, um, this huge collar for a, a bigger dog who may get bigger still um, is a challenge but I know I have the basic sewing skills to figure out things to really make a custom collar I we've bought like four collars and none of them were right for him so now I'm more or less adapting one to fit him and that becomes a learned sewing skill even when things fall over on your table even if your machine comes unthreaded, you can still do it.